So if we look at these, the four elections that you're talking about, or if there were another one you wanted to bring into it, uh, but uh, of those four, which might you say, or pick two, but what would you say would be ones that in terms of fundamentally altering the course of American history. Uh, I guess FDR's election, that's mm -hmm. one that I think we, no one could argue with that as an absolutely basal change mm -hmm. in American history. Mm -hmm. But what's, of the others, uh, what might you say would be uh, the most historic with a capital H? <laughs> well, the election of 1912 is one where you had a, again, reflective of incredible changes in society. And I think it's an election that has a lot of resonance right now in 2016 and, and in the contemporary era. Talk about that. Imagine if you were born and if you were 50 years old in 1912, you've been born into an America that was mostly agricultural, where most people were farmers, small town, not very, not an industrial power. Uh, by 1912, you would be living in a place that was on its way to becoming 50% urban in terms of population, where they had these giant industrial cities, these huge factories belching smoke, and you had millions of immigrants from all around the world, including Southern and Eastern Europe, coming in to the United States and really changing and challenging what it meant to be an American. Uh, uh, so in this incredible change, it, unlike today, you didn't have a very large central government to, as a countervailing force against the forces of big business or uh, uh, this, this incredible in industrial growth. And so 1912 became this, this debate that in some ways was a perennial debate in American politics about the questions of how much power should the government have and how do you balance individual rights with collective responsibility. Uh, but it became a debate where uh, there, there were voices calling for larger government. Many of those voices were coming from the Republican side of the aisle. Uh, so, and and on, the, on the Democratic side of the aisle were, were arguments against a stronger uh, Washington presence um, for, more, for more, perhaps some more government activism, but activism at the state and local level. With the old system breaking down, how did the outcome of that election, or did the outcome of the election, shape the next several decades of American history? Mm -hmm. Well, going into 1912, the Republican Party was the party, you might say, m more closely associated with progressive politics or this, this idea that there needed to be a professionalized, larger uh, government, government entities that were uh, in some ways regulating or controlling these uncontrolled forces of the market, protecting workers, et cetera. Now, progressive politics of that type span was found both in the Republican and the Democratic parties. But what happens in 1912 is that Teddy Roosevelt, who had been president, a former president, kind of like in 2016, you had very familiar names in the race, or some of the names were very familiar. He had left the White House, uh, had effectively handed over the keys to his hand-picked successor, William Howard Taft, who was a, a, a Republican of a very similar strife, uh, stripe to Teddy Roosevelt, that, that Taft and Roosevelt were really not that far away on policy terms, in terms of where they, where they, how they approached the, the business of governing. But Teddy Roosevelt really, he really didn't like not being president anymore. He was pretty young, he was vigorous, uh, and he thought that Taft was really not holding up to his, le his legacy quite well enough. So he comes in in 1912, first runs against his old friend Taft for the Republican primary, creates this huge rift within the Republican Party. And in doing so, um, you know, T Taft eventually rings out the nomination from the GOP. When that happens, Roosevelt bolts and becomes the, the flag bearer of the Progressive Party, the Bull Moose Party. And uh, because of that rift, who wins? The, the Democrat, a guy that most people hadn't heard of, two years earlier, Woodrow Wilson, the former governor of New Jersey, a, uh, a history professor, <laughs> among other things. And, and so what, the reason this has a lasting effect is after that, the Democrats become the party of reform. They become the party of progressive, uh, of a more um, active government. Many of the things that are talked about, the broad concepts that are talked about in 1912, are realized eventually in the Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal. Franklin Roosevelt, a Democrat.